So why did the picture go to prison? Because it was framed. <laughs> Perfect. Hello there, broskies. Erkin back here with another sneaker that's been highly requested to review. On today's episode, we are reviewing the Nike Air Max 95 Ultra. So the Air Max 95, it's one of the GOATs, one of the best Air Max ever made, in my opinion. My daily beater for work is the all black Air Max 95 and I can't seem to switch it out. Because I've broken them in, they are pretty comfortable for me at the moment. It wasn't always the case, but right now, they're pretty decent. And of course, I just love how they look. They're very subtle, but they've got that bad boy look to them as well. And in today's video as well, I'm gonna show some slight differences between the two because I know a lot of people have been asking me. And to be fair, this is my first Air Max 95 Ultra. So I do hope this video clears up some of those questions. Now the 95 Ultra is what you would get if you put the OG 95 on SlimFast and literally it looks just like that. If it went to Weight Watchers for a few months, you'd get this. Not only is it sleeker, it's a bit more narrow, it's a bit lighter as well and they've switched up some of the panels. And whether that's a good thing or not, you'll just have to wait to find out. And don't forget, I will leave some purchase links down below for this particular pair where I can too. Now if I do sound a bit mash up, it's because I'm battling a bit of hay fever and I'm fasting as well. So no need to panic broskies. Now, if you are after the Air Max 95 Ultra, the first thing you're gonna be thinking about is how these actually fit. And just like the Air Max 95 OG, I went true to size with these and I had no problem. Now these do fit a little bit more narrow than the 95 OG. So if you have wide feet especially, maybe factor that in. But overall, in terms of length, I didn't really notice a difference. And of course, your best bet is always trying to pop to your local JD or Foot Locker to try these on. But at face value, these were a true to size fit. Right, I know we sort of skipped ahead a little, but this one is easily forgettable. And of course, I'm talking about the box. Being a GR sneaker by Nike and all, it does come in your red standard Nike one. Nothing to scream home about, but what else did you expect? But on the product sticker, it does say, Nike Air Max 95 UL aka Ultra and then it says J22 and I'm not sure what that refers to it could be the year but correct me if I'm wrong but the official colorway is black cool gray and wolf gray now I've got to say when I pulled these out of the box I was more surprised in a good way than I thought I'd be these look more like an Air Max in vigor but as soon as you get them in hand you can see a lot more resemblance and now I'm starting to see why people flock to this Air Max now of all that waffling and comparisons aside let's take an even closer look to see what I'm talking about. A lot of people used to complain about so many things when it came to the Air Max 95 OG that they sort of addressed it on the Ultra. Such as the bulky look to it, it's a lot more narrow and streamlined, but it still has the original DNA in it. We do have that sort of skeletal look to it in terms of the upper, but it feels more like one layer, whereas the OG sort of had that layered look to it. But of course, mostly this sneaker is of that black. On the underlays, we have that mesh, and then on the overlays, we have those TPU panels. Of course, we've got hints of gray and white on here. And on the panel closest to the laces, they do sort of look like fingerprints with of course crosses there too. But where the toe guard is and it leads up to the laces, you can tell it's a lot more trimmed down. Now the lacing here is a lot more familiar than some other panels. It has these looped eyelets and of course these roped laces too. But one thing that they have done, which I really like about this shoe, is the holographic panel going up the tongue. Now I didn't notice it straight away. I thought it might have been 3M or just a normal plastic TPU panel. But turns out if you move it left and right, it does actually change. It has hints of the Nike with the Nike swoosh on there and then Air Max as well. Now the tongue in itself does feel like cotton mesh and then they've switched up the Air Max fonts on that tongue tab. And you know what? I'm not really mad at that. Now we have this black cotton sock liner and the insole is black too with this dark gray Nike Air branding on the insole. Now at the back of the hill counter, again, we've got that same holographic panel there. And I'm so glad they did this. And then just on the lateral side to it, we have that gray Nike swoosh. Now the midsole here does seem a lot more trimmed down, especially underneath, but at the same time, it is recognizable. 
The air unit at the back is a lot more visible compared to the normal OG95. And even at the forefoot, the air units do look more visible. But it is of course all blacked out here. And then the outsole is another thing where they've switched it up. And to be fair, in my opinion, I don't know if I like it that much. But we sort of have that remix to the waffle panels towards the forefoot. And then we have the Nike Air Max branding in the middle, with another difference towards the back. But I guess it's just something you have to get used to. So what are we thinking, broskies? Are you liking the look of these? Or is something you're not really too sure about? Well, nonetheless, that's what I'm here for. Of course, we have to decide whether these are a buy or a buy. Now I can't lie to you, these are definitely grown on me the more I look at them. Of course you cannot replace the OG95, no way Jose. But if you wanted something a little different in terms of the looks, then this might just be for you. They're not as comfortable as the Air Max 95 OGs and I've noticed that straight away. Some people did complain about the OG95s though having that pinch on the back of the heel, but with this one, you didn't really have that problem. But you can defo feel the lack of cushioning on the upper and that padding around the ankle collar as well. This one doesn't really have that cozy feel that an OG95 does have. And I'm just not used to the shape of this shoe being so narrow and streamlined. I like that bulk to the Air Max 95 OG. But like I said, it might just be one of those things you have to get used to over time, if you want to get used to it, that is. Because they're retailing at like £155, they're near enough the same price as the OGs. And the OGs are sort of creeping up in price, they're more leaning towards the 165 mark. But it's always going to come down to your personal preference. And as cliche as this sounds, the OG sneakerheads are always going to steer to the OG95. And I fall into that camp. But I'm not mad at these. If I saw someone with these, I'd be still respecting them, you know? And it might just take the right colour way to sway me over but i'm always gonna steer to the og95 i just love that sneaker is that my second or third favorite air max of all time so it's gonna be hard to beat and i know they try to fix a lot of the things people didn't like about the og such as how bulky they looked and maybe the outdated look as well but for me the og95 is just a timeless classic but that doesn't take nothing away from this sneaker it's still one of those shoes i'd still look at and think mm, maybe one day and I'm still going to recommend these broskies. Overall, the Air Max 95 Ultra is going to get an absolute buy. But broskies, comment down below what you think about this Air Max 95 Ultra. Is this one of those shoes that you're after or are you going for the OG 95? Comment down below and I will pin the best comments. Anyways, broskies, thank you for watching. Thank you for staying this long. And don't forget to hit me up on my IG as well because I'm most active over there and don't forget to like subscribe comment and share and of course until the next episode take care